Hey guys, it's Vince. Um, I wanted to do a video um, explaining breakout boards and the amount of pins available to connect your drives correctly. And when I say breakout boards, I don't care if it's a standard breakout board, one of the high-end breakout board models, or even the Gecko G540, which I myself typically sell the most of. Um, this pertains to everything. A lot of times guys are wondering, you know, how come I'm running out of terminals? It says not to daisy chain, but I do not have enough spaces available to hook the drives up correctly. How do I do this? Where do I go? I'm going to jump right in. This is a schematic for a typical six axis breakout board. I use this myself in my six axis system. Um, again, it's very basic. You guys can see this is very easy to follow. There's not a lot of, um, you don't see relays and all kinds of other crap going on. For you extreme novices out there, I'll just say, I'll give you a quick breakdown. DB25 cable is right here. It's called a DB25 because it has 25 pins. The pins are all broken out in this breakout board individually. You can see it assimilates each signal. And then once it does that, it allows then communication from the PC um, to all the instructions to be sent to your drivers and whatever else. So signals can go back and forth between the computer and basically the breakout board is just a middleman. Okay. Um, again, the cable used is a male cable. It has the male pins and then this plugs into the female board itself. Um, that basically is the sum up of a breakout board. What you're going to notice though, and this is what I want to draw most attention to, and I don't care if it's a G540, which I'll get into later, or a typical breakout board if you're building your own system, is that you will find very quickly that if you look here, you've got your step and direction signals allocated for the X axis, Y, Z, and A. Again, you also have the other two here for your six axis, which are your remaining two axis. You see it's got step pin 2, direction pin 3 for X, Y is 4 and 5, and so forth. What you'll find, though, is that each driver will have two wires allocated coming, again, individually, to this breakout board, to this 3.5 mil terminal block. You will find that one wire comes here, one wire comes there, but you're also going to have a ground that has to get into the breakout board. Well, what you'll notice, and this is where the problem starts, is there's only one ground terminal which means in order to do this, you would be hooking up each driver together into this ground and then splitting it on the end of the driver. Guys, that is incorrect. That is called daisy chaining, and that is not best practice. Um, and when I say it's incorrect, and I cannot emphasize this enough, I've seen it on YouTube enough where guys are showing, they're real proud to show you their system. Um, the ones that are doing it incorrectly, it's blatant. Typically, they'll daisy chain drives together. They'll go one, two, three, you know, whether it be power, whether it be ground, whether it be signals. That is not the proper way to do it. And I'm going to prove it right now. Um, if we come over here, and this is right direct from Gecko Drive, okay? This is one of their informational uh, posts that they've done. You can contact them directly. Again, I deal with Gecko all the time. This is what I do. Um, one of their top, po top topics says never daisy train your drives together, describe later. And if we come down here, and I'll just see if I can find it. Here we go. What is daisy chaining? This is when you hook all your drive's power cable up in series. If an input has a positive and a neg negative, it needs to own needs its own wire going to the source. This is called a star formation. Let's say you have three drives. Drive one is hooked up into the power supply. Drive two is hooked into drive one, and drive three is hooked into drive two. Now, guys, that explanation right there explains what you see typically done in most for most uh, videos you see on YouTube. Okay, that's what they'll do. They'll daisy chain one drive to the next to the next and think they're saving themselves time. Now, watch, we're going to continue reading. The only drive that is actually hooked up into the power supply is one. If drive one were to blow up in short circuit, it would take out drive two and therefore drive three with it. Okay, so if it blows up a short circuit, it's going to take all the drives out because, again, drive one is really feeding drive two and so forth and so on. So imagine trying to troubleshoot that. Imagine trying to go through, your machine is all set, now you have an issue, and your whole system went down. And it's usually only because of one individual component. That's where the logic sets in. Do it right the first time. Yes, you're saving some time because you're running. You're just running a jumper wire over. In the long run, it'll bite you in the ass because, <laughs> honestly, what you'll find is that what I just did typically 
uh, causes me more time and effort trying to find what blew up and, and honestly it can also blow other drives. So think in that aspect and be very cautious with it. Now I'm going to read direct from them. The correct way would have been to have drive one plugged into the power supply, drive two plugged into the power supply, and drive three plugged into the power supply, all with separate cables. Okay, guys, once again, all with separate cables. How do we do that? How do we do it to where it makes sense to do that? And again, let me just reiterate, this is direct from Gecko. This is not me saying this. This is from Gecko themselves. You can see here, that's from Marcus, okay, lead engineer over at Gecko. I'm just telling you right now, you really want to pay attention to this stuff if you don't know what you're doing or in the sense that just is the first time you're, you're handling CNC um, items. Components are very delicate, guys. And when you're dealing with this kind of stuff, you're dealing with a lot of money, do it right the first time. Um, so that being said, we know now we're not supposed to daisy chain. This is where the guy who's at home who's saying, you know, I want to do this myself and I want to do it right. He's trying to pay attention to detail, but he realizes he simply only has one ground here on this breakout board. And, it, and a lot of you guys are sitting there probably saying, well, that's a generic breakout board. You know, my high end breakout board may have more blah, 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 blah. I'm telling you now, most breakout boards typically do not have an enormous amount of ground inputs or other inputs for that matter. They make them very basic because, again, they would be absolutely huge if they had to encompass every type of connection known to man. They will have some other models will have more ground connections than others. But typically, you will find if you do not use a terminal splitter or a signal uh, distribution block, you will find that you're going to have problems with daisy chaining because there's no other way to do it. So we're going to avoid that by using a product I designed Again, um, this is my own design. It's designed around CNC use. However, there are other options for you out there. You can use just, you know, terminal blocks, ground bars. There's different things you can use. Other than that, I'm going to jump right in and show you how you can do this to where this would be hooked up correctly and each driver would get its own ground signal without being daisy chained to this block. You would simply run one lead right from this ground and that one lead would connect right over to here. which is a signal distribution block. How it works is that one lead from that breakout board would come right over here, and then it would be split across seven terminals. Okay, in this case, it's seven terminals. If you had less, you could go with a four-pin breakout. If it's more, we can go with a longer terminal block. It just depends on how many outputs you'd want. But you can see now one terminal in here then splits it seven ways. So each each unit is actually thumb nutted in, so it's toolless. It then uses a circular pin clip, which actually goes around it. That terminal clip then is locked into place. There's no, no mistaking its uh, performance as far as it's slipping or moving. It's done. So that's what this whole design was about, was simplicity. Again, you can see it's a bolt-through design. You do have nylon here, and it insulates the block, and you're good, and your standoffs. You can have your standoffs as high as you'd like. Um, but overall, this is how this design works. Now, when you guys see this, I, I get a lot of questions on, you know, um, different things. And this is, I'm just talking about splitting your ground signal. And you can see here's one that you would have to use that block automatically or something similar. And then in your inputs, you would do the same. Because if you look here on your input, you have a single terminal once again. Now we have a choice. Okay, we either do the same thing again and hook all of your home switches, and I didn't say limit because I don't believe in using limit switches because you have soft limits in your software, and they far exceed the safety of mechanical switches. Please review soft limits. Um, do a search on YouTube and learn about soft limits. Um, it will save your butt by far better than mechanical switches. However, some guys do want to use home switches, and in that situation, you would have each switch's ground coming to this location, and even your e-stop. So if you did that and you had home switches, let's say you had three home switches, and then this e-stop, which means four switch grounds, you would have all coming to this one location. Once again, bad practice, not properly done. You want to use a terminal splitter. Henceforth, you come back over here, and you would need a seven pin, probably a four pin terminal out would be fine for you. But once again, you'd run from the ground of the board itself. The board itself's ground would come over here and then split the signal and you'd be set to go. Okay. Um, 
this is the way wiring should be done, guys, on all of this. Wiring should be done the same way. Um, with your power going to your drivers, okay, this isn't even on here, but if you had your power supply, let's say it was over here, you would have a hot and a ground coming over to each X, Y, Z, A, however many drivers you have hooked up. You do not, just like Gecko stated, jump your hot from, from the X driver to the Y to the Z and so forth. You don't do it. It's incorrect formatting. And once again, if one drive goes down, they all go down. So you have to think in that aspect, you never do that. You always do it right. You spend the time, do it right, and spend the money. I mean, it's not always, this is not cheap. This is not a, a, a throw together, you know, I don't care about quality. I'm hoping, you know, I'm, I'm filtering out the guys that just want to get a system to move. We're getting past that stage. I want guys that want their system to be reliable and have as much quality as if it was built by a pro because they're learning the right way. That's what you really want to look at. And I can't emphasize that enough. If you're just looking to throw something together, then you can forget everything I'm saying because it doesn't matter. But for the guy who understands he's trying to build something that's reliable that he can profit from and do it with um, reliability he's going to want to do it right not to mention if you do it the right 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 way excuse me and you have let's say x driver go down but they are not daisy chained what you're going to find is that you will be set with um going through and replacing a drive if need be very simple because if x driver goes down being it's allocated and separated by itself, you will not have to worry about Y driver, Z driver going down. Okay? If X drive is daisy chained, once that goes down, they all go down. Now you've got to troubleshoot each individual drive. How is that faster? It's not. So think about it from that perspective and you'll be set. Okay? That covers basically how that would work there. Now, where else a signal distribution block comes in handy? Once again, these are called, I call them signal distribution. They're also power distribution blocks. If you connect a power terminal, whether it be a ground or a hot, again, this is black, so it would be ground. If it was hot, of course, it'd be red. Uh, you could split a power terminal. You make these into power terminals. Okay, it works in the same theory. The other thing I want to point out is, and I'm make this as quick as possible, is that for guys that want to, split an axis okay let's say this was a three axis breakout board now in this case it's six so you really got a lot of room for expansion however let's hypothetically say this is a three axis breakout board yet he's got all three axis already used and the space is allocated for step and directions how could he add another motor so that he could support tandem motors on one axis okay and this question gets asked a lot how do i add two motors on one axis so that I can, you know, run my x-axis with tandem motors. Now, guys, I'm not a big fan of tandem motors on any one axis. There's more setup involved for novices. There's a lot more troubleshooting, a lot more maintenance. Um, anybody who's run those systems typically will tell you that. Um, but if you're willing to do it and you're, you're maybe you're more advanced and you're fine with doing it, then the one thing I'll say that's super nice about a breakout board format is all you have to do is use two signal distribution blocks you would use two of these and it would be a four pin terminal most likely you'd use because you're not going to even come close to seven but a four pin terminal would be used two of them and i'll tell you why you need two because you need one allocated to step for pin two and one allocated to direction pin three and then your x-axis signals would be split so you can then add safely another axis easily actually you could add up to four if you were using a four terminal block you could add up to four other uh, four other motors simply by connecting them that way and it would be splitting the signals so you'd be actually splitting your signals and adding another driver so instead of you and this is once again the incorrect way to add two motors uh, is to use one driver never ever use one driver to power two motors you use two drivers to power two motors and split the step and direction signals guys that is the correct way to do it and with these distribution these uh, distribution terminals you can do that you can simply sit here come into your uh, signal distribution block and split any signal you wanted to do okay whether it be a ground whether, whether it be a step and direction signal, again, for step and direction, you would need two of these because you're, you're naturally splitting your step and direction. 
okay? But that's how that all would work. And again, you'd run a wire in here for step. You, on your secondary block, you'd run a wire in for direction. And then you can come in over here and wire in both individual drivers to come in to be controlled by one set of step and direction signals. So for X, let's say, if you wanted to have two drivers hooked up for X to control two motors, which is the proper way, you would then use the signal splitter, signal distribution block, and have it wired up to two, and have one wired up to three, and then have each driver wired up to that. And that would then split your signal. So you can see how powerful this is, especially when um, you're building your own system with a breakout board. Your options are almost limitless. You can do that same technique with switches. So if you wanted to add more switches, all you would do is come over here again. And you see a lot of guys, and this is where the gecko comes in. The G540 is very limited in um, the amount of terminals that are available. Well, one of the things you'll find typically, and I'll come right over here and show you a diagram, you only got 12 terminals, but what's really interesting is for your limit for your home switches or limit switches, whatever you want to call them, you have four terminals allocated to it. Now you have a touch plate, and a lot of guys like using the touch plate, and that takes a, a pin. Realistically, to keep these terminals open, if you take and split the signal, if you come over to one here and split the signal with a signal distribution block, and then use another one for the ground right here. You can do that right off your power supply because you can see where that goes. You could then have all your switches on that one terminal and you'd be set and it would leave you available two, three, and four. So you wouldn't be having this all filled up. So you, if you ever wanted to add something else later on, you could. So once again, it's got a lot of potential for you to really go in and manipulate a lot of different connections. What if you wanted to add dual e-stops on your G540? You could do the same thing. You would split signal 10 with a signal distribution block and you would split it with the ground, okay? It's very, very simple. Now, once again, if you're gonna split a signal, typically you're gonna need two distribution blocks to do it, but the power and the, and the um, options available when you do that are amazing. On top of the fact that it leaves you peace of mind knowing if you have to troubleshoot the system, it's much easier to do because once again, using the distribution block, you would just come over here, undo the thumb nut, check whichever component you think may, may be the issue, and you could plug it right back in and it's not affecting anything else. So once again, it's very, very powerful and very, very useful to understand everything that's available for you because like I stated earlier, you know, a lot of guys look at this and say, man, I've only got four, four outputs that I can actually use to do switches on you know, anything, and then they double chain them, the daisy chain and the switches together and everything else, when realistically all you have to do is, is use a signal splitter. And if you use a signal splitter, you can get as many switches, you could use two touch plates, you could, I mean, there's so many variables of options to use, it's amazing. You just have to really think about it, but that is the true potential of using a distribution block. Now, again, whatever you want to call it, this is technically a signal distribution, whether it be signal for power or signal for signals and terminals, whatever you're trying to control, you can easily do it as long as it's conductive, that'll work. So, and it'll do it properly because you're not daisy chaining everything together. And I can't emphasize that enough. Rather than having all these switches, and I've seen it before, they'll have all, this, all the home switches wired into one terminal. If one of these switches goes out, guys, I mean, you're going through then, and what are you going to do? Check all four of them to see if they're working? That's ridiculous. You're much, much more efficient to go in, spend the money from the beginning, whether it be this unit or another unit, and, and do it right, and actually distribute the signal properly to where each connection goes to one switch, and then you can come back over here and look back and go, man, I found out which switch was bad. It took me two seconds because I knew all my other switches were up and working, and I'm good. So again, do it the right way. It'll save you a lot of time. Hopefully, you guys have picked up a lot from this. Again, um, especially if you guys are out there building your own system with a breakout board, because breakout boards typically take much more time, especially as you're getting to know all your hardware. But now, hopefully with this video, you'll understand the potential of what these, what's out there to help you do it the correct way. And like I said, don't take into account 
that, or I should say, do take into account that this board itself is very generic in that it's a just six axis basic breakout board. The higher end models are no different. They will have very limited number of grounds. They'll have limited number of pins. But if you do it right and you use a pin splitter, terminal distribution block, you can do it to where anything is expandable. So if you're not happy here, you can always add, once again, you can have, instead of having each switch on each individual input, which is what they're doing here, you could have it to where all the switches are on 12 and 13, but with the distribution block, if you split it that way, you would have each switch hooked up to where each one could be troubleshooted if there was a failure and they wouldn't all go down. So think about it like that. What you're basically doing is making a terminal for each one. So again, I can't emphasize it enough. If you have any questions, I know this is kind of a lot of information to digest, but overall, it will make you building your system more efficient. It'll make it much, much easier to troubleshoot, and you're following best practices. So hopefully, you're building your system with that same, that same tenacity that I use when I'm assembling for anybody I build as a client because, again, you want to do it right and do it right the first time and do it to where you have peace of mind knowing, you know, I, it took me a little longer, but I did it right. It may not have been as cheap as I'm looking to go. A lot of guys are looking at price, but really look at your time too because time is money, guys. I don't care if it's your time, my time, it's all money. So think about it from that aspect. The better job you do, and especially with the, the better the equipment you use, again, these are toolless, and I made them toolless for that reason. If you wanted to manipulate, if you had to troubleshoot, it takes you seconds. With the gold ring terminals, they don't slip, they don't slide. Once they're locked down, they're done, and you're good. And it's all bolt through design. That was the whole principle behind it. If you need one custom made, you let me know. If you're interested, if you have any other questions, let me know and we can go over it and we'll figure out what's the best way to you know, tackle your application. But hopefully you've learned something with this. And like I said, it's, it's most interesting to see just how beneficial this is. And it doesn't just pertain to a breakout board, but any terminal block. So on the Gecko, you have a 12-pin terminal block. Here you have um, a typical breakout board, which would, again, assimilate basically all of the pins. It would pertain to that as well. So hopefully you've gained something from this. I hope it's been informative, and I've opened, I hope I've opened up your eyes to as far as the potential with be it the Gecko or any other system when using uh, distribution terminals. But um, if you do have any questions, don't be afraid to shoot me a message and we'll get you taken care of. Again, the best way to reach me is through eBay. I'm on there pretty much all the time. Um, and again, if, if it need be, we can always exchange phone numbers. We'll get everything taken care of as fast as possible. Thank you. Take care.